I'm gonna show you guys how easy it can be to build a bird cage. Welcome back to the channel guys, glad to have you here like always. In today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how easy it can be to build a birdcage or a flight. It's not gonna take a lot, you're not gonna need expensive power tools, you're not gonna need a hammer, you're not gonna need a drill or a saw or anything like that. Over the last couple of weeks, I have been hard at work building all of these cages that you see back here for the parrot enclosure. Now I got the majority of them done, we just have one more to go and I decided why not do a video where I show you step by step exactly how it is that that cage is built. Let's take a look at some of the things that you're gonna need in order to build this cage. The very first thing that we have here is the mesh. Then we're gonna need J clips. Then we have the pliers for the J clips. And then we have the pliers to cut the mesh. For this demonstration, I'm not gonna be using these pliers. I'm gonna be using this because it's a whole lot quicker and it doesn't make your hands hurt as much. One of the very first things that you have to try and decide is what type of mesh do you wanna get? Now these mesh, they come in a variety of different sizes. These rolls come in two feet, three feet, and all the way at the end, we have four foot rolls. Now, all of these rolls have a bar spacing of less than half, which means that I can use these for any type of bird. I can go as small as a finch inside of these cages, or I can go as big as a macaw. It doesn't matter the size of the bird because these cages are strong enough and their sizes between the barring is small enough to house small birds or big birds. Now the next thing that you have to try to decide is the gauge of the mesh. Obviously, the higher the gauge, the thinner it's gonna be, the lower that number of gauge is, the thicker the wire will be. These mesh or rows that you see here in front of us, they are 14 gauge. It's a very thick wire which allows me to put any species of bird in here. Now one of the things to keep in mind with the gauge also is that the thicker the gauge, the harder and sturdier the cage will be. If you have a roll that is 19 gauge, that's very thin. It's gonna be very difficult for you to make a long cage without it being flimsy and wobbly. While these 14 gauge, you can go as far as six feet, which is the size of the flights that I have been building for the parrots, and the wire itself stays very firm and stiff. All right, so you got your mesh, you got your tools, what's next? Well, it's time to cut the mesh. You ever heard that saying, measure twice, cut once? Well, if you haven't, you heard it here. Measure twice, cut once. This mesh is expensive. The last thing that you wanna do is mess up on the measurement and have to throw a piece away and have to start cutting again. So here on the floor, we already have the four foot roll. We're gonna start cutting it. We need four parts. We need the bottom, the roof, and the two sides. It's getting hot. Once all your pieces have been cut to the correct length, you wanna go ahead and place them on the floor, one next to another. Then, using your J-clips and pliers, you wanna go ahead and make the edges even, right at the corners, and start clamping them together. Now, just like you saw, make sure to add four J-clips to every single corner, and this is gonna be very important because when you go to stand up this box, you wanna make sure that it is sturdy at the corners and that it doesn't pry open. And just for good measure, before we move on to the next step, we're gonna add another J-clip in the center of every single one of those connections just to make it that much more sturdier when we go to stand it up. Now that we got that done, we can go ahead and move to the next step, which is grabbing the front of the cage and the rear. This is gonna be the front wall and rear wall of the cage. And this is gonna go attached to one of the ends of this structure that we just built right here. So we're gonna go ahead and attach it to that side right there, and then let's grab the other one and put it at the end right there. Just make sure that when you do it, your lines are going up and down and not sideways like the other stuff that you just built. You want these lines to go up and down because it's gonna make the cage look better once it's completely built like this one right here. See how your lines in the front run up and down? The lines on the side run up and down and then you have your top, your roof, which run opposite to the line. So this is gonna be the best way to get this set up. Everything back here has been clamped up. Now it's time to stand it up.
Here you can see that it's starting to take shape. So once I get it up and get it folded into the shape that I want the cage to have, what you end up doing is you come to the corners and you start to clamp every single one of the corners together. And along the way, you start to slowly clamp it. Once all of your corners have been clamped, then you can go ahead and start focusing on the sides. You wanna run along this side, clamp everything down, clamp everything down, clamp everything down. Once this side's done, we'll flip it over, start working on the opposite side. Once that's done, flip it over again until you go around the entire cage, clamping everything together. Now listen, don't be afraid to use plenty of J-clips. This is what's gonna give this cage the sturdiness that it needs to look nice once it's completely finished. So the final cage is completely finished. Now that all of them are done, we can start to focus on other parts of the cage in order to finish them and make them useful for birds. Like for example, we need a door. The doors need to get placed on every single one of these cages and also the area where the food is at. Now for the food, personally, I want it to be on the outside of the cage. I don't want it on the inside because I don't want the birds pooping inside of their food. So I have something specifically built just for that. And this is what will be placed on the outside of the cage. This houses the two food containers and it will be placed at the bottom portion of the cage where the birds from the inside can access it. So here's a closer look at this food enclosure that I have built. As you can see, this is the section where the birds will come up to it to eat. The cage will be on this side. So they have easy access to their water and they have access to the food. There's only a three inch overhead space. So that only allows the bird to stick his head in. It doesn't allow the bird to go in completely and start pooping over either of these containers. Then when we look at it from the side, there's only three inches this way and three inches up. And that's enough for them to go in and eat what they need to eat. Then on the back portion of it, there's a small door that we can close and open in order to go into the inside and access the bowls to pull them out to clean or for food. So I really like this. I'm gonna go ahead and attach it to the first one and then we'll move over to the other things that we have to do. Like for example, the doors for the cages and also the little brackets that are gonna be holding up the perches inside of the cages. All right, so we have our food enclosure. We're gonna put it next to the cage, kind of measure out exactly where it is that I want it to be at. And then I'm gonna start cutting the little wires so I can clamp it down onto this. So the food compartment is in place already. I've clamped it down to the top, but we still need to go ahead and clamp it down to the bottom. But in order to clamp it down onto the bottom section, I have to go ahead and open the door so that I can go through the inside and clamp it. But you can see, kind of get a general idea of what it will look like and how it's gonna work with the food bowls. So the food bowls go there, the door closes, and then the birds have that access through that inner portion right there. Now that that's in its place, let's go ahead and open the door. This is where the door is gonna be at. The reason why I'm putting the door on this side of the cage is because the nest will be on the far left. Now the nest on average is gonna be about 12 inches wide, but in case for some of those more difficult species that may require an L-shaped nest and the nest comes this way, I don't want the door to be in the middle bothering me. So I'm gonna to try to place it as far this way as possible. The door is 12 inches length and 12 inches in height. It's gonna open this way so it doesn't bother the nest. Now all I have to do is cut the entrance to the, to the door right here, and then we'll have our door finished. Door has been cut. That's where the birds are gonna be eating at. Now all we have to do is focus on putting the little brackets and placing the two perches on this cage. The final thing now is the perches. Personally, I like to go natural. We have a lot of woods back here, so I cut the pieces that I need for every single one of these cages. Now we just need to cut this to three feet long, two of them, there's gonna be a perch in the front, there's gonna be a perch in the back with the little brackets to mount it on. The brackets are finally in place. Now it's time to place the wood inside of here. You can see how the brackets hold the wood in place. Now each one of these woods has a little piece of nail that gets connected to the bracket so it doesn't slide out. And then that also helps support this sidewall so that it doesn't pan out a bit at the distance. So you can see how it kind of keeps the sidewall straight because that wood there in the center kind of pulls this wall and this wall 
together. Now, if you're wondering why didn't I just come to this side right here and put a piece of nail going through here with something on the outside to kind of hold it in place, well, it's simple. More often than not, what ends up happening is that the birds will chew on this wood, especially the bigger species of parrots. They'll destroy this wood and it'll have to get replaced. And the problem is that these cages are gonna go in an area where they're gonna be side by side, just like this with very limited space. So that would mean that in order for me to replace this and take out the piece of screw that I put through here and replace that piece of wood and put a new one in, I would have to pull the cages apart and bring them down. This way it's a little bit easier. Once this piece of wood breaks, I'm able to just go ahead and pull this out just like this through the front, take it out, and then replace it with a brand new piece. All right, and that's it. Finally, we're done. The enclosure for the food is finished. The front door, the brackets for the purchase are completely done. We got a perch here in the front. We got a perch in the back. You can see that one sits a bit higher than the other. The one in the back sits higher. We had to open an extra door in the back just to be able to put these brackets in this perch. It makes it easier to access this back perch whenever it breaks and we have to put a brand new one. And overall, I think the cage came out very good. Now, the only other thing that we have to do is all of these other cages. We have an additional 25 cages here that need everything that we just did for this one. So each one of those needs the bracket for the purchase, the purchase, the front door, the back door, and the food enclosure. So I have my work cut out for me, but that is gonna be it for this video, guys. I hope you have enjoyed this DIY as to how to build a cage for your finches, toucans, parrots, whatever you wanna build it for. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and we'll see each other in the next video. Bye.